pastored my first church in 1980. I wasn't even old enough to, pat, to drive the church van. I had to get special permission from the insurance company to drive the church van because I was 24 years old, had to be 25. But in that first year of ministry, God told me what my significance and purpose would be beyond that. Had four teenage children all die violent deaths in four separate months back to back at Revlon Baptist Church. The first was a little girl named Lori. Her cousin went under a bed and found a pistol, pulled it out, pointed it at her and shot her. I lived around the corner. I was the first person that they called. I was at the house. I was holding Lori in my arms when the EMS unit came, doing the very best I could to stop the bleeding and realizing that I was doing absolutely nothing and found myself cussing at God, why don't you do something? The next month, I was teaching a class at Willington Academy. I was teaching ethics at a high school class, and I got a phone call. Brian, one of my basketball players, had had an argument with his dad. Instead of trying to resolve that argument, he took a rifle, put a blanket over his head, and shot himself. And I was one of the first people to the house trying to explain to some grandparents and parents about a God who loved them, even in the midst of this darkest moment. Billy was our misfit. Billy, Billy, Billy wore a rope around his waist to hold up his, his pants because he couldn't afford a belt. Billy had a hat that came down, his ears stuck out like this, and Billy was a pest. Billy was just one of those kids that was constantly wanting to be in the center of attention. And I've told you this, I remember the day well. It's as clear in my mind today as if it happened yesterday. When I looked down the hallway at church and I saw Billy coming and I ducked into the ladies' restroom so I wouldn't have to mess with him. Knowing Billy, he would have followed, but he didn't. But that rings clear in my mind. Because not too many weeks thereafter, Billy wanted to prove how important he was and let somebody fire a shotgun over his head, took a full, full load in the forehead. And I was at the first, at the emergency room when the doctor said, there's nothing we can do. In the fourth month, which would have been January, Brian, uh, Ch Chad, who was the older brother of the uh, 10-year-old girl that started this story, took the extension cord off the Christmas tree and hung himself from his bunk bed in his house. And I did that fourth funeral. My point is you got to give thanks in the darkness. If you're going to walk in the light, doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to touch the darkness. And I can remember well standing in the pulpit at Revlon Baptist Church with that casket, going to the graveside and doing all of the things that I do as a pastor, then going back to my office, taking my ordination certificate off the wall from the Fort Johnson Baptist Church, and I came so very close to ripping it up, putting it in an envelope with a note that said, this is not what I bargained for. I don't want this. And there, as clear as day, as God gives us purpose and direction, God said to me, Steve, you're going to be dealing with misfit kids all your life. Your purpose in life, your significance in life are those kids that are going to come your way at mission projects. I didn't know anything about a mission project, but at mission projects, I find all these misfit kids, and they become my buddies. Every church that I pastored has misfit kids. Here, that would be Mahari. No. I've always had those kids that, that needed someone to give them a little extra attention. Do you know what I'm talking about? My life has purpose. My life has significance. It does not mean walking in the light that you don't have to walk a few steps in the darkness. Because every now and then you've got to go where hurting people are.
And every now and then you've got to deal with that family and try to explain why they've just lost a child. Or you had to explain to a church why four, all under the age of 18, had died in a four-month period of time. And you had to be able to explain that God loves you and that God's grace is significant and that God is still not condemning us. Or say to a whole community that gathered into that church that day, 400 plus, who we had a, a gun seminar on how to make your home safer and how to tell our story and how to, how to come alongside other people who are hurting. Do you understand what I'm saying? Walking in the light also should reflect a little bit of our purpose and our significance that's been given to us by God. Not all of you are going to be me. And you're all saying, thank God. And I'm never going to be you. And I say, thank God. But each of us has to find what it means to be a children of light for us. What is it that God's given to us to reflect? What is it that God has given to us to be our specialty or our ministry or what we do and why we do it best? Because being children of light does not mean that we don't always avoid the darkness. It means we sometimes have to go there. 